Hello world. This video is going to be walking you through setting up our Athena, the Ragnarok Online private server. I've created this guide. This video is to supplement that guide. It expects that you have a Debian, Jesse, or equivalent installation pre-installed with GCC, Make, uh, and the necessary build essentials. Um, it also expects a MySQL instance to be running and accessible. We're going to start by cloning the repository. This repository comes with pre-built item database files as well as txt files. And to my understanding, the devs maintain the text files and build the SQL files on a regular basis. So sometimes you may run into issues, like for example, they recently added the dorm race, and you may have to rebuild the SQL file from the latest txt file in order to get support for certain things or to fix bugs. So once this is cloned, we're actually going to go into the tools folder, and we're going to use their pre-built converter tool, and we're going to actually rebuild the SQL database for the items. And there it is. This just rebuilds the renewal data. Um, obviously, you can switch that out if you're doing classic. This guy does not cover how to set up classic, though. Uh, next, so I've already installed MySQL on my system. Uh, it, obviously, you want to secure it if you're running it on a remote system. In my case, I'm running it locally, so I haven't secured mine. Um, and I just have a passwordless root for convenience. So we're going to log in. And we're going to create an R Athena database. We're going to add a user that can access that database. And we're going to grant access to that database for them. Next, we're going to run this command right here. This is going to load all the SQL files in the SQL files folder into MySQL. In this case, I do not have a password, so I'm going to have to delete this flag here. There we go. So, there are both renewal and classic files, but they are loaded into independent tables to my understanding, which means that you won't run into any problems loading all of them at once. So once that's taken care of, we're gonna go back into MySQL. The default username created is S1 and then the password of P1. And since the system will complain about that, we're gonna update those so that the servers communicate using non-default values. So, and then, oh, sorry, you know. there we go. Next, we're going to create a GM user. So this GM user will give us access so that we can test this later. Um, I will be creating a supplemental video for creating and setting up a client after I finish the server video. So, uh, next, um, in this case, we have IP tables. Uh, since I'm running this locally, I won't make this change on mine, but if you were running this remote, you could secure down that server and then only open these particular systems. This would prevent people from trying to access your database, for example, or any other systems running. Um, Next, there is a bug that I ran into where if you're logging in using my the version of the client I'm using, which is the 2015 October 29, um, then you may see that the, uh, the file descriptor size, I think, is 10 instead of 6 because of the way that the logic is set up. And I had to patch the code in order to prevent it from freezing when you go from the character server selecting uh, to getting a, a list of characters. So I'm going to open the care cliff file, and there should be a function with this name. And it has a conditional statement, and this conditional statement does not work. So I'm just going to replace that whole function with this one here. It's a minor change. Uh, I'm guessing it'll be fixed in the near future, so not a huge deal. Next, in order to compile this, we have to specify a packet version in order for this to work. Um, this is actually easier than modifying the header, so this is the suggested way to do this. Um, so we're going to run this first. This will configure it with the 2015-1029 client. We're going to run make clean, which will clean out the files, and then we're going to run make server. Obviously, if you make server changes to the code, you're going to have to recompile. Uh, you would want to make clean and then make compile or make server. Um, if in the event that you need to switch clients that are supported, you would just change this and rerun this first. Um, but you don't have to rerun this uh, so long as you aren't changing the client version. So the next thing, I have two different sets of configuration. One is for local testing, which will do the 127.0.0.1, and the other is for a remote configuration, where it explicitly says that you can either set a DNS record or a WAN IP to everything. Um, I believe some things can run off of 127.0.0.1 on a VPS, but I have not had success doing so, so it might be something I'm doing. I've had more success just setting everything to a public address. Um, in this case, uh, DNS is automatically going to in uh, be computed to find the um, the WAN IP. So um, setting DNS does not allow you to change the addressing at runtime because it determines that when it launches. So don't assume that you can change the configuration just because you're using DNS. 
Uh, so, since we're running everything locally, we need to explicitly say that it's going to be running on that IP. And these configuration files are all going to be in the import folder. In this case, we're setting the same user and password we did for server communication. We're setting an uh, identifiable server name. Um, I disabled some, some things and set some additional settings. Um, and we explicitly set these to 127.0.0.1. Um, if you do not, by default, I believe the character server in this file and the map server in the map file will automatically determine their um, WAN IPs, which will end up creating problems because you would either need the IP tables open or your client won't be able to connect to the right things. So, Next, we're going to configure the connections here. So in this case, there is all the database connection connection information that we set before. Um, you can actually separate that out and set additional IPs and other information. This setting right here allows it to use the database instead of the text files or the items and monsters and a few other things. Um, and the full descriptions of these, of course, are right in the actual files themselves. So if you don't want to listen to me talk about this, you can actually just walk in through some of these and, and make changes to them. Uh, they have comments to support some of them, but they're not always clear. So uh, next, I enforce MD5 passwords. So I'm going to make that change in the login configuration. And lastly, I'm going to make map configuration so that it forces it on the same local host address. So, um, the last thing we can do, there is a script called Athena Start, and it allows you to do start, restart, or stop. So we're going to start this up, and if we see no errors, that means we were successfully able to configure and compile this system. And there it is. So we ran this operation, it launched, and there's all the components that were connected. We can test this again by doing a restart. So if we wanted to change configuration, for example, we could do so, or update a database record or something like that. Reload it. And once you're finished, obviously, you can shut it back down. Um, in this case, I'll be creating a supplemental video, which will use this server. Um, if you did find this information helpful, feel free to leave a comment, or if you'd like, a critique. Um, I'd love to hear about success stories as well as any failures. Uh, obviously, you're also welcome to post on the actual official forums and ask questions. Um, I actually am really happy with the design of our Athena. For something that was built in, or designed in 2004, it actually has really awesome uh, sharding capabilities. So, especially, it's also based on a 2002 product. So, in any event, my next video will be a client tutorial, and then I may create actually a video afterwards about configuring multi-server configuration. I'm thinking I might use Docker in order to isolate the networking so that I don't actually have to pay for multiple VPSs. So, good luck.